Hello everyone. I know all of you have been waiting to see when I will return to makeup tutorials. The foundation that I've been dedicated to for the past few months has been Chantecaille's Future Skin. I have experimented with four different shades and you'll see a little mini debacle today in this video. <laughs> I tried a bunch of products that, you know, for the first time on camera, which is something that I usually don't do, but I just wanted to make things a little bit more exciting for you guys. So it turns out that chamomile alone is a pretty good fit for my skin, but I will apply this for you guys. You'll see my skin close up in awkward angles with many weird faces, but I hope you guys enjoy this video because I know you guys have wanted to see a foundation tutorial and update for a while. Of course, that means you'll be seeing my bare skin, so prepare yourselves. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've cleaned and prepped my skin for makeup. We're going to begin with primer. This is Tatcha's The Silk Canvas. And I'm just gonna warm it up between my fingertips to give me a really smooth canvas for my foundation. A lot of these pore smoothing primers tend to irritate my skin, but not this one. I gently smooth it on around the areas where I have the most pore concerns. I've raved about Chantecaille's Future Skin quite a few times now. It's an oil-free gel foundation and I did post a lot of the details regarding what colors I use on my blog, thereviewer.com, in case you've missed it. I talked about it in a Chantikai Roundup review, so please go check that out in case you haven't seen it. But I'm going to start with my color in shade today, which as you can see is a lot darker than I should be wearing, so I'm going to mix it with another shade. And to keep the rest of the foundation in the jar contaminant free, I use a Q-tip and I gently dab it onto the outer portions of my face. Then I'm going to use the lighter warm shade in chamomile in the center of my face. So as you can see, I just dab it on in the middle. Today, instead of the oval eight, I'm using the Fluenta seven. And I actually like this just as much as the oval. It's a little bit more stiff here. So I have to use a gentler hand, but sometimes that's a good thing. It forces me to not drag the product across my face. Okay, rewind because that was clearly way too dark for me. Right now I'm just using chamomile by itself, which is probably a better idea in the first place. You really don't need too much of this, especially if you're using an artiste brush. I'm just going to step in a little closer so you can see how the texture looks on my skin. And I actually find that cream and chamomile are the best combination now that I've tried Shea. Clearly is much too dark. I'll probably blend it into chamomile come summer because I definitely do get tan easily. And generally, Artiste recommends you hold the brush at the end of the handle, not up here as I was doing. That generally means you'll end up using too much pressure and you just need to glide this foundation across the skin. I highly recommend these brushes for foundation because they are definitely a step up from beauty blenders, although I will say beauty blenders are a lot easier to clean. And let us not forget the neck. Yes, this is a very unflattering angle, but the higher you go, in coverage, the more important it is that you need to cover your neck. Otherwise, you're going to look like you're wearing a floating mask. And for those curious, my earrings are by Bobble Bar. They're from the Fine Collection. I really love them for every day. They're super light, but not too crazy, dramatic, or hoochie mama. I really like them. They're a cute statement. So now I'm gonna back up and just stifle around so you can see the overall effect. I would say that this is about medium coverage, right? This is actually my first time wearing chamomile alone, so there you go. And in case you're curious, cream on me looks a little bit more peachy. This one's definitely more yellow. Now I'm going to use Chantecaille's Light Reflecting Concealer, and I like to put this on areas to spot cover my redness. This is in shade 4W, so I'm just going to put it right along here, mostly focusing on this cheek because even though I don't have any big welts like I do on this cheek, I would say over here I struggle more, especially with textural imperfections and redness. Again, I'm going to use my Fluenta brush and this time I'm just going to use more of a stippling action. A lot of people like this concealer formula for under the eyes. Alrighty, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just a a little bit more glowy, kind of makes my cheekbones look a little taller. Now I've mentioned how much I love these new Urban 
Decay All Nighter Concealers. Initially, I started testing Light Neutral and I tested Light Warm, but it's really, really fair. It's more for fair to light skin tones. So winner, winner, chicken dinner is medium light in the warm undertone. I think this formula is excellent. Probably the best Urban Decay product I've ever tried. And normally I don't wear Urban Decay as you guys know, but I really, really like this concealer. Just to show you guys, I'm gonna use a touch of light warm. As you can see, it's noticeable on my skin. So I'm just gonna put on a few little, okay, that's not just a few. That's more like several, more than several. <laughs> I do tend to get really ambitious when I film these tutorials. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna look natural. And then what do you know, full coverage. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start blending it with my Smoke Artiste brush. I really love this one for a concealer. I feel like even though I prefer the flat top versions for concealer, this one is just wide enough and big enough where there's enough surface area that the curved edges don't matter. So now I'm just going to pat this concealer into place. I like to dab the concealer. I feel like it prevents the coverage from shearing out too much. This is my trouble spot here. As you can see, voila, it makes a huge difference, this concealer. Okay, so now I'm just going to start using sweeping motions because I don't like to get too heavy around here. Always make sure you shear out the base makeup and concealer around your eyes. Okay, let's tackle this side. And this Urban Decay concealer does dry down pretty quickly, so you do have to work fast, but this Artiste brush makes it easy that even though you were talking and filming and putting on your makeup, it still works. <laughs> I really do use a combination of these products in real life every day, and I definitely don't make it look this heavy. All of these complexion products, you don't have to wear nearly as much as I am. And just in general, I do think that a lot of you prefer to see full coverage on camera anyway. At least this proves you get your bang for your buck. <laughs> if you're in a rush, I would definitely recommend using just the concealer if you have acne scarring. And if you don't have acne scarring, then just use the foundation. Okay, I'm super up close and personal again because I'm going to attack this super stubborn pimple on my cheek with my By Terry Click Expert. This is one of my favorite concealers. I love this Click Pen packaging and I use this in shade number three. And basically I just dab it directly onto the blemish and then just gently around to kind of diffuse it. Now I'm going to set with my translucent powder Powder by super goop this is the best thing that's ever happened to me and my sunscreen game I'm just gonna tap the brush onto the back of my hand to get the powder out this is a mineral powder with SPF 45 and I like that it's translucent because it's not gonna make my skin look even more heavy this just makes my skin look and feel ultra smooth I love the way they did this powder if you have dry skin you absolutely need to use this all the time now we have the Chantecai the compact that I've been holding this is their HD powder perfecting powder in bronze so I'm going to use this all over my face with my Laura Mercier bronzer brush this powder is ultra silky smooth it's like invisible going on. I love it, but it definitely provides just the right amount of color. It's not too warm. A lot of bronzers, especially on my skin, look too warm, but this one definitely not. If you guys are looking for a lighter bronzer, I would definitely recommend this. This is awesome. Okay, let's get some color on this mug so I don't look so washed out. I'm going to use my little Urban Decay heat palette. I'm going to use the shade Hot Spell and my Artiste Fluenta brush. This is the oval number three. It's a good brush, I do like it. I think I put on too much on one eye, not enough on the other. I always do that. I should always start with this eye. This one's super easy to use. Again, you just glide it on. I like using it for all over color. This makes everything really fast and really simple. This looks like a nude in the palette, but it definitely leans more orange on my skin. I'm going to use my Tom Ford pencil brush. I hope they still have this. I'll link it down below in the description box if they do. Now I'm using the color Heist, and I'm just going to push this into my eyelash extensions to make sure that my eyeball doesn't look like it's floating. Again, I'm sticking with the color Heist. My lips are looking pretty dry, so I'm going to use this lip gloss slash balm slash plumper. I just discovered this and it tastes and smells like guava. It's so good. I highly recommend it. I got it from Space NK. I really, really like it, except it does have that tingling sensation. If you can't handle it, you probably won't like this, 
but it doesn't make my lips peel like crazy. I just take it off after a little bit. I'm gonna get super close again because we are going to put on Chantecai eyeliner. This is their gel pencil, and I'm going to firstly tight line with it. So before it sets, I'm going to start smudging it with Chantecai's eyeliner brush. When I test eyeliners, I like to make sure that they're not smudgy or if they are smudgy, I wanna know how smudgy they are. Round two, this side's a little easier to see. So I just use really short strokes as to not irritate my lash band too much. I don't want all the lashes falling off as I'm applying. <laughs> and basically when I do this, I'm not trying to smudge it away so that you can't see it. I'm doing this so that it doesn't smudge later all over my upper eyelid. I'm pretty good with a wing with a pencil, it's a lot harder to do, especially on camera. But I'm trying it for you right now. All right, not half bad, right? Use your little fingernail and utilize those tools as well. Or you can use a Q-tip. I like a super sharp, neat wing though, so I'm going back in one more time. And for some people, you might think, well, that wasn't worth it. It barely looks any different at all, but to me it does. A very important thing is that we have to go and fill in some bald spots. And I'm just going old school and just jabbing away. Now, just to have some fun, I'm going to put on a Tom Ford glitter. This is from his Extreme Eyeshadow Collection. And I have 16 of these shades swatched on my blog. Again, it's thereviewer.com. I'm just going to pat it on the center and just kind of blend on the outside. I'm not going to put it on top of the eyeliner. As much as I love this compact, it's a little hard to see out of, so I would just recommend using something else for application. Okay, now time for brows. Actually, I was going to skip this step, but I decided, you know what? We might as well put a little mascara on. This is Chantecai's Longest Lash, and it has an eye serum in it, so it will make your lashes grow. If you don't mind splurging a little bit, this is definitely a two-in-one product that I recommend. This stuff does kind of make my lash extensions look a little bit neater. It has this combing effect. Plus it makes them look a little bit longer. Before I applied the mascara, they were moving all over the place. You know, sometimes they poke your eyes and that's really aggravating. But if you wear a mascara like this, it kind of just gently holds them in place. Alrighty, we are at the finish line. So I'm going to do my brows with Benefit's Brow Pencil. I'm going to just barely define them. And I like this Benefit pencil because it's a little bit waxier than what I normally use, which is Burberry's, and that's still my holy grail. But I like this one on natural brow days. It's a pretty good fit for my natural brow color. This is number two. I'm just going to add a little bit more lift along the middle of the brow. Now for a little bit of color, I'm going to use a blend of these two blushes in my Hourglass palette to create a very soft blushing effect. I like to focus the bulk of the color along the tops of the cheekbones to create a more dimensional sculpted face. It's very soft and pretty and highlighted. I don't like to use a separate highlighter when I'm wearing blush. I just use a blush and highlighter in one, and that's why these hourglass blushes fit the bill for me precisely. Now that we're at the end of the makeup, I'm just going to tap on a touch more of that By Terry concealer on top of this really, really stubborn blemish. This is the bane of my existence currently. And last but not least, finally, we are at the end of my foundation routine here. This is my Lip Chic Anaise, I believe it's called. It is a nudie peach. And this formula is really moisturizing. This is not a new lipstick, it's just new to me. This does feel like a balm more than it does a lipstick, but I love the color. It has this translucency, but it covers my lip color completely. I would definitely check out more colors in this formula so long as they're not too sparkly because they just make the lips look very kissable and soft and smooth. Nice.
And again, I promise I do not wear this much makeup in real life unless I'm going out somewhere for a special occasion. I like my foundation coverage sheer and mostly translucent. I really like being able to see my skin despite my acne scarring. I highly, highly recommend the Chantecaille foundation and a lot of the products that I featured in this video because I just feel like they're easy to use and very flattering. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, everything will be listed down below and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.